終わりだしっかりしろしっかりしろやれやれだぜ I believe that everybody I know is a stormer! Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. Having these bones makes me feel something that resembles joy, I think. I want to caress them. Oh boy, welcome back to another animation breakdown. I don't even really know how to start a video like this. This is never fun to do, so I guess I'll say that if you really enjoyed this episode and you don't want to listen to someone who didn't like it, then here's your free warning. If you're someone who loves to post, shut up and enjoy things, or you're overreacting when you hear opinions that don't match your own, well, maybe consider growing up, but also, again, a warning to close the video now. This was such a missed opportunity of an episode, and I want to approach this video a little more generally to get my opinion across. There wasn't much animation to cover anyway, so hopefully you'll forgive me this one time. I think this will do a good job of explaining how the different components of an episode come together and affect or don't affect one another, so it's still pretty much production related. But anyway, let's dive in. This episode was Vegeta's final stand, and the script comes to us from Toshio Yoshitaka, who's one of Super's strongest writers, and I think his script here definitely still reflects that. We've got stamina consistency consistency actually acknowledged for once, we've got a little more personality coming out of Jiren, we've got the return of Ultra Instinct, and Vegeta feels much more like his post arc self, which is something writers often fail to bring to light in Super. The fact is though, we've seen most of this stuff multiple times throughout the tournament now. Goku's transformed plenty since Ultra Instinct debuted, and Vegeta's had enough emotional flashbacks and speeches to last a lifetime. At least on paper, any of the cool stuff here is kind of undermined by the fact that it's not new, and its impact is diminished the more times you repeat this stuff. When this type of thing happens, you have to fall back on other ways to make these scenes have any sort of emotional weight, and that's where direction and storyboard factors in. Both of these aspects done well can make a repeated moment feel special. For example, the Future Trunks arc had the issue of repeating Future Trunks' rage transformation multiple times. In its debut in episode 61, it was really well directed by Takao Iwai, with interesting framing from Kenotsuka's board. When it happened again in episode 65, the the overall meaning and the greater context of the story was lost, but with Ryota Nakamura's incredible board and direction, it was still a cool moment and had real emotional weight and impact. I specifically point to these examples because it's proof enough that simply repeating points isn't necessarily bad on its own, and I'd hate for you guys to think that that's what I'm saying here. The direction and storyboarding in this episode is really, really bad, and it's the number one reason for this episode being as poor as it is as a complete product. And I say complete product because the art artwork and animation is perfectly polished, and I'll get to that later on, but everything needs to be of a certain level to have things outweigh or make up for shortcomings of weaker aspects, and I don't think that really happens here. The episode's directed by Masanori Sato, who's not a great director. His work on the series, with few exceptions, has been pretty weak, and this one unfortunately follows in the same vein. Every narrative beat rings totally hollow, there's no sense of atmosphere or struggle despite the events on screen, it feels like everything's going through the motions with no real attempt at creating the drama the script requires. It's pretty all over the place tonally, and I think Sato's choice of music plays a big part in that. It swaps between all different kinds of pieces from Sumitomo's back catalogue, and none of it really flows together properly. The biggest example of that is probably the transition from the Chozetsu dynamic piano rendition into the Ultra Instinct track. I can totally see the intent there, but the execution is incredibly awkward. The biggest issue in this episode is its storyboard though. Teriyoshi Yamamura returns once again after his work on the second half of 126. I'm sure you'll remember that I really enjoyed his board there and was saying that it's such a step up from his terrible work on the Resurrection F movie. It was actually filled with interesting angles and a great sense of scale, and I so wish he could have continued that upwards trend, but unfortunately we are all the way back down to Resurrection F tier here with one of the flattest and most uninspired boards of this arc. 
It is filled to the brim with flat shot after flat shot after flat shot, all framed with the same basic film school rule of thirds composition that plagued Resurrection F. The poses are super uninspired too, with characters standing with their fist up over and over again, which is one of those generic poses Yamamura's used time and time again for home release covers. All of the pans that have the potential to be great are just so bland too, and of course there's no sense of scale whatsoever, it is flat as a pancake. The arena is no different to last week, yet it feels a thousand times smaller. It really is just Resurrection F all over again. Yamamura's great understanding of martial arts choreography is on full display here, and much like the movie, I really appreciate that, but it's wasted on yet more bland compositions and of course the fact that it's exceptionally slow paced. I just don't understand how he's managed to regress so much after such a strong showing in the last episode. It's like he used up all of his creative ideas and now we're left with the most stock looking shots he could think of. I'm seriously disappointed, I honestly thought he might be improving in this area. The fact that it happened during such a climactic episode only makes it hurt so much more. On a positive note, in spite of the bland composition, the actual animation quality was very well polished and I'm sure for many of you, that will be more than enough. The first half is supervised by Osamu Ishikawa, and I think this is probably his strongest episode on Super ever. Yukihiro Kitano was the top credited key animator here, and yet you can barely see his poor art thanks to Ishikawa. It's exceptionally well drawn, and considering how Ishikawa typically struggles to draw Vegeta, his output here is even more impressive. Kitano's animation under those corrections was actually pretty decent too, displaying some competent movement that conveyed Vegeta's struggle quite nicely. In the second half, Yuji Hakamada takes over supervising, and although his work is once again mostly corrected by Miyako Suji, we do actually get to see his style clearly in a few shots, and it's not too far away from his output on GT. The highlight of this half and the highlight of the episode as a whole, however, comes from Chu Yong Se, who animates Goku vs. Jiren initial fight. Like we've come to expect from Chu, there's real finesse to the movement, and it's laden with his great looking smoke and effects. It's really nicely done, and I wish we could have seen more lengthy action from him in this tournament. But that is kind of it as far as animation goes. You can see Hiroyuki Itai for a split second in one scene, and Yamamuro appears to have corrected some scenes once again, but the rest of the episode kind of just peters out with still after still. Still, this was definitely very action light on the whole. So that's how the episode stands, a decent script, polished if mostly static animation, and then an absolutely dreadful storyboard and seriously lackluster direction. The negatives seriously outweigh the positives for me and that's such a damn shame. Direction and storyboard are so, so important and middling animation can never make up for shortcomings in that department. They dictate the best the animation can ever be. So if they're lacking in the first place, everything starts to fall apart and that's exactly what's happened here. I know a lot of people really enjoyed this episode, and I can totally understand why given the content, but I think it really is Resurrection F 2.0. It's something a lot of people are going to be wowed by initially, but once that initial spectacle wears off, the lack of lasting value is really going to show and it is not going to age well. Next week should hopefully be the opposite. It's directed by Masato Mitsuka, who's Super's best director, and I hope you guys notice the inevitable difference in quality between his work and what's on display this week. It looks like Hirotaka Ni is indeed still taking cues from Takahashi after 122 with some fantastic looking artwork on display in this preview. I can also see what looks to be Yuichi Kurosawa doing some key animation, along with some unknown work filled with fun looking smears. I am all ready to put this latest episode behind me and enjoy the next, so fingers crossed they deliver in a big way. Once again, if you enjoyed this episode, that is awesome, and I hope you can at least understand where I'm coming from in this video, but either way, do let me know down below how you felt about the episode, because I'd love to hear some different perspectives and maybe understand the appeal a little bit more. Today's intro came from Aaron W Gamer, and I laughed so hard when he sent me it, so make sure you tweet at him and let him know what you thought. As always, be sure to thumbs up the video if you thought my points were presented well, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you next time.